Hello and welcome on another workshop by Scandi PWA team. Today we'll talk Docker. We'll see what files we are using for our Docker Compose. I'll teach you some useful CLI commands and we will see overall what is our Docker consist of. So let's start first with referencing the documentation. Docs can be found on docs.scandipwa.com. Here under, if you scroll down, you can see the Docker setup part. And here starting with template structure over here and going down, you can find all the information uh, related to Docker. But today I'll try to teach you a little bit uh, more visually so but if you prefer text implementation or text documentation you can refer this website so let's start first by discovering the project because this is what we most commonly do first uh, so this is where my project is located so i'm opening the scandi pwa base folder using my favorite editor for me this is the vs code so i'm opening it up and here i can immediately see i have multiple docker compose files i have some docker files i have dot application and dot env and then I have the project and Magento already installed inside. Very interesting, very interesting. But first, let's talk the commands which we use to set up the Docker. So for me, it is uh, how to get them. I know we have the DC alias. I know we have DCF alias. So let's see them available in our alias field. So to do it, I'm typing alias and I'm uh, piping out and uh, filtering out only those who starts and contains the C declaration. And here is one, uh, the docker compose minus f docker compose yaml minus f docker compose local minus f docker compose SSL. So what we can see here is that there are three files included in our production-like setup. Uh, why is it so? So let's switch uh, to the screen for a little moment and try to draw it down. So first of all, we have this docker compose yaml. So the docker compose as a simple docker compose. What it contains inside is a declarations of multiple services. So if we switch back to my computer and open up this docker compose file, inside we will see multiple services declared. And first one is up. But to see the structure more uh, easily, we can use the outline tool. And here we can select services and try to uh, expand try to uh, expand them so here we see that here we have declarations for uh, multiple services let's switch back to the desk board and here it is the elastic search elastic search uh, so the default search for scan the PWA is elastic search next we have the um, application container itself so the application container which runs magento but we will talk about this later i will now sum up that this is the m2 uh, additionally we have mail dev mail dev is here because we are trying to catch the emails to not send them to different services and this is a point where you might uh, where you need to pay attention if you're trying to go into production uh, with the Docker setup, which we will talk a bit of it later about is it recommended or not. Additionally, here is the MySQL declaration as a service. And additionally, there are two more is Redis, Nginx, and Varnish. So here it is, a full list of services, but uh, let's, uh, and additionally, yeah, yeah, the, the one is the render tron, render tron. So, uh, what all of those services do and why are they declared in the original Docker Compose? Well, this is because all of them, except mail dev, are required for scan the PWA itself to function. So the application is running the Magento 2, we have already discussed it. And in Magento 2, everything happens. And Scanty PWA is just a theme for Magento, which means that running something, uh, running Magento in the stack 
like running Magento as a service is very important for us. So this is absolute requirement. Then we have uh, this service. It is the uh, MySQL. It's requirement for Magento. So let's write it down. And this is because we have Magento. Uh, additionally, we have Redis. And Redis, as well as Varnish, are required because we have a thing called persisted query. So let me draw another dependency. It's uh, located here. And inside of here, we have this service called persisted query. Oh, it will be very bad to, to see. I will switch it to the marker. So here, uh, the persisted, persisted query. And the persisted query is a mechanism which we might talk later in a different video related to Scandi PWA frontend. But overall, the persisted query is a mechanism which allows us to efficiently cache GraphQL requests. And for it to function properly, we need a varnish as a cache, because otherwise, why, what to use? And we use Redis to store the hashes of the GraphQL queries because this is the main idea of persistence of queries. The queries are transformed into hashes and then stored into the Redis database. So those requirements are for persisted query and persisted query is a part of Magento. So those services are requirements for M2 to run. Then we have this service, which we also reference often, and this is the Nginx. So why do we have Nginx in stack? Well, because we need to route the requests properly and varnish or uh, sending the request directly to varnish or sending requests to application or uh, catching it using the mail dev. Everything here is handled by the Nginx. So Nginx is the heart of our application. It's the request router, the main request router, and I will mark it here as a heart. And this is important because if Nginx is not working, you will see 502, you will see uh, bad gateway, whatever, everything will be, uh, if this service is not running, you will get uh, errors and you won't see them uh, in Magento logs. So if Nginx service is down, this means uh, you must fix it right away because you won't be able to see it uh, in Magento logs. The service is separate. And the service connects Varnish with application, with uh, the RenderTron, with MailDAV, and this is the main router of the application. Next, we have following stuff, the RenderTron and the uh, Elasticsearch. Well, those are optional services, but they are uh, must in Scanty PWA setup. Let's talk each one first. The render tron is a pre-rendering solution. So this is uh, SEO specific stuff. So if we want our website to be crawlable by simple crawlers like Yandex and Baidu crawlers, Google is uh, smart enough, but those guys, we need to render our client side uh, rendered application on the server. And to achieve this efficiently, we're using the RenderTron, which is the pre-rendering solution. So this service is here because we need to create the HTML representation of our client-side rendered content on the server. And this is the easiest way to achieve it. It stands be before the other applications and it really uh, generates the HTML, sending the request to application, blah, blah, blah. And this allows us to achieve a great SEO. Uh, so, I'm sorry, not SEO, but uh, search engine optimization. Cool. And uh, now the Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is optional, but we recommend using it because Elasticsearch uh, allows for quick search, much quicker than MySQL. And this is optional requirement for Magento 2. So it's also a part of the Magento. But the only arguable service located in this stack is the mail dev. And the question is why mail dev is here and what it does. So the main idea of mail dev is to catch the emails which you send from Magento instance. Why is it so? Because uh, we don't want our fake emails, which we type in while testing, to get notified. 
And why is this located in the main Docker Compose, which is included in any type of setup on the local, on any? Why is it here? Well, this is because the Docker Compose originally is not meant for production. So the Docker Compose setup of Scandi PWA is not production grade. And this is important to note. Uh, so by design, by default, this is not production grade. So this service inclusion, this inclusion of MailDev, is here because we are not going for production, so we'll never send emails to our to anyone. So this is not production grade service, and I will highlight this again, not production. And you can only run it in production with very deep modifications, which will uh, complicate the development. So for production setups, we have a different Docker setup, which is more scalable, which builds in a completely different manner. Instead of building uh, and then deploying, and everything goes going for a long time, it builds much longer, but deploys in three seconds. This allows for scaling. This allows for multiple, multiple things. But it is important that this setup, which is shipped in Scanty PWA base, is not meant for production. If you want to host uh, Scanty PWA in production uh, using the Docker, you can uh, you can uh, go to Scanty PWA, uh, Scanty PWA dot com slash cloud and this this will uh this site it will open you a link where you will be able to register and um, get your instance running this kind of pwa production grade docker setup but we're talking not production cool so i'll erase this and let's continue with our services so we talked about the Docker Compose YAML and let's switch back to my screen. We talked about Docker Compose YAML and we understood why following services are here. And uh, the last thing to mention is that Docker Compose YAML is the base of any setup. It means that if you are setting up with uh, SSL or you're setting up without SSL, you're setting up on your local machine or you're setting up in the remote server. Anyway, the uh, Docker Compose YAML is required. So if we are building our uh, startup command line, if we want to start the Docker Compose, the first thing we will include in our Docker Compose command, if I write Docker Compose, Compose and I write minus F, the first file to include mandatory will be docker-compose.yaml. Cool. So we talked about docker-compose-yaml. Let's see other files we have here. And let's see the command, original command. Next file it includes, except docker-compose-yaml, it includes docker-compose-local. Why is uh, a docker-compose-local included? Well, let's open this file and let's see. So let's once again see the services. And here we have multiple additional services added. Uh, not multiple, but single one. It's Kibana. So here, when we write minus F uh, and write docker dot docker compose, sorry, uh, dot local dot YAML, what we get here is additional service called Kibana. And Kibana is a service which allows to inspect the Elasticsearch. So this is a helper service which is really useful on your local if you want to debug Elasticsearch. So this is just a debugger, debugger for Elasticsearch. And it's not needed in production because in production there are different tools to monitor Elasticsearch. But what else uh, does this have? It, as you may see, has the application and Nginx service referenced. If I go back here, uh, I will showcase this with the mouse. Here you have Nginx and application container also referenced. Why is it so? Well, because by default, the application container is not mounted to your host system, which means that it just pulls the image from the internet 
and it uh, starts the scan to PWA using default Docker Compose, yeah, do, uh, sorry, Composer files. So it just uh, starts the Magento from scratch and you work on top of it. But if you want to include your files, additional files, we need to mount them from the host system. Well, how to do it? You need to edit the volumes. And as you may see here on the uh, computer screen, we are editing volumes and we are adding and mapping the whole SRC folder to var www public. So what it means is that when you are running this on in the Docker Compose YAML, the very important thing is, I will write this in a black box here, the SRC folder is mounted to var www public. So this is your root in the container. So if you execute the application container, which we talk a little bit later, you will enter it into this folder and it will contain Magento files. It will have a pop folder, the vendor folder, the app folder, etc. So everything related to Magento is located in SRC on our host. So this is uh, like we do uh, your installation folder slash SRC. Here will be the composer JSON files. Yes. And those files from this folder will be mounted into the container. When I say mounted into the container, this means that you will be browsing them. You will be uh, able to uh, work with them from the container. So the container will have access to those files and will think that this is his files, not your machine's files. Okay, and the same for Nginx. The Nginx is a little bit changed. For him as well, we are mounting the same SRC. This is required for routing and static files, but uh, don't really think about it. The most important part is the application container. I'll mark that this is the application container. So in the docker compose.local.yaml, the application container is contains your local files. So files from your local SRC folder are here. Uh, are in the container. In this setup, if you just include minus F Docker Compose YAML, the application container will have files which are sent to him from the uh, internet, from the uh, hub of where we build our images, from the Docker hub. So remember, friends, remember the Docker Compose local is when you're developing on your local or when you want your uh, SRC folder to mount into the container. This will work a little bit slower than if you would pull the image from the internet immediately with your files. So, but in this setup, if you just include minus F Docker Compose YAML, you would only get the application container which would contain files which, he, which the container will pull from the internet. So here you won't have the connection to your local system with docker compose.local yaml you will so this is why it is included in our alias so we are always working on our local and we wish our files to sync with our uh, host and lastly lastly here we have the docker compose.ssl and because we don't have let's talk about it first let's open this up here and see what it includes and uh, in reality, not too much. It's just a single SSL term service. Uh, so let's draw it in our schema here. I hope we will have some places. Uh, not really too much space here, uh, but let's try. Let's try. I hope it will be visible enough because there is nothing too much to write. But here, minus F, additional file, the docker, uh, compose, compose dot uh, SSL dash SSL dot YAML. This file is here to add additional service called SSL terminator. So it's SSL term with the dash. So what the service does, it, uh, it stands between the, it stands before the original Nginx container, Nginx service, and it stands before it because he needs to provide the certificates and encrypt the connection. So here inside of him, uh, do you remember the command from the original setup, which we did is the make third command. 
So the make cert command, what it did, it generated the certificates. It generated certificates. So those generated certificates were included and mapped to this container. And uh, then it started to, uh, it started to uh, serve the internet using those self-signed certificates. So the website is served by the SSL terminator if you include the SSL term on the port 443. So this is a port 443 and this is the SSL port, so HTTPS port. And on this port, you will be able to serve the application uh, using your self-signed uh, certificate. Well, uh, this is the explanation of the original DC command. So as you may see, we have the Docker Compose YAML which includes all the services. We have Docker Compose Local, which includes all the local mappings to your host machines. We have Docker Compose.SSL, which just provides you with a self-signed certificate. And if you, for example, would like to deploy on your instance and you have your uh, own certificate, not self-signed, but a normal certificate, uh, you can include it, you can exclude this, uh, this file from the setup and then you can replace it with your own Nginx standing before this Nginx. So, so you have your application and before it you place your own service which will provide the secure connection. So this should be excluded when you are setting up on some server, for example in development instance. Cool. Uh, let's erase some parts because we need to talk about one additional service, which is, well, let me see, show you the screen. Here, if we write the DCF, additional alias we have, the uh, DCF stands for F, where F stands for frontend. So the setup with frontend or so-called development setup has one additional file called Docker Compose minus F, uh, Docker Compose frontend YAML. We don't have place for, for it here. So let's erase the uh, current board and I will include the service uh, and I will draw the service uh, into our schema. Or we can write it here but there is a blink, uh, so let's first erase, uh, let's erase some. So let's erase some. Let's only keep this because this is the core part. So additionally, we have minus F uh, docker compose dot uh, frontend dot YAML. And this file introduces, let us see, um, let me switch back to original screen. It only introduces few services. It's the frontend and change in the Nginx. So the frontend, why is the frontend introduced? Well, and what is the frontend? Well, the biggest difference, uh, sorry. Uh, so here is it introduced the frontend. And what is the biggest difference between uh, why is the frontend even needed? Well, first of all, uh, when you're working with the application, you want your changes to immediately reflect uh, on the website. But this is impossible to achieve using uh, the Magento and uh, our, on our theme together because to, uh, to see changes you need to compile them. So you need to run npm run build from the theme folder. And this is a very tedious work to do and to run it every time this is we are too lazy for it. So to automate this process and speed it up we created an additional container and introduced it to the stack called the frontend. This container should only be included in development, but its main goal is to run webpack dev server, dev server, and on this while running this webpack dev server, it should uh, it should provide us with every route except the GraphQL, GraphQL and slash admin. So we want admin and GraphQL to still be uh, returned from the application, from the original Magento. But for everything else, we want our own 
uh, application to respond, we can render other routes on client side. So we cannot render the GraphQL on client side because this is the data source. We cannot render the admin on client side because Magento has no admin, uh, no client side admin renderer. So what we instead do is we serve those routes by Magento and everything else, like literally everything else, we're serving uh, from our single page application from our SPA. And this SPA is hosted by the Webpack Dev server inside. And we need only one change to make this happen. We need to introduce a change in the Nginx. So if I switch back, you can see that the Nginx is also here as a changed service. And what it's changing is that it declares this routing pattern, basically. And this is done by uh, Nginx which is this one. So the heart of our application switches a little bit and that's additional config, which redirects everything from GraphQL and admin to Magento and uh, everything else to our SPA application, which is served by Webpack Dev server. This speeds up the development. So if you include this file in a stack, the file from uh, application, so SRC, our folder of Magento, application, uh, app, design, front end, blah, blah, blah. So here will be uh, Scandi Web, here will be PWA. And all files from here, all files from here, yes. All files from here will be served by Webpack Dev Server and watched. So if you change one file, it should hot reload and appear on the front end immediately. And this is why we also need front-end YAML. But this should never be used when deploying to production or when deploying to anywhere. This is just for development. Cool. And one additional file we have here, which we haven't talked about two additional files, is the core YAML and the remote YAML. Well, what is remote YAML? The remote YAML uh, can be seen as very simple uh, file and it is never run on your local, but instead it is run on the, uh, but instead, let me showcase you this, here it is. So the uh, remote YAML is only used uh, when you want to deploy to some development instance where you want a persistence of uh, the media but you don't want the persistence of uh, vendor folders, etc. You have them you know, as a source. You have them declared in Composer on your in your app code or app design. So you have those changes. You don't want them to uh, keep to be kept on server. So you just mount the media data, and that's pretty much it. So. The difference here is that if you include minus F Docker docker dot dash compose uh, dot uh, how it says remote remote uh, sorry let me switch back uh, remote dot yaml so if we do like this if you add this additional service additional file uh, what will happen is that instead of mounting whole src to uh, var with www slash public Instead of doing this, it is not doing this. It is not. Instead of, it will mount the media data volume. So it will mount the uh, SRC, SRC, uh, let me do it like this. It will mount the media volume to the var www public, uh, then it will go to, again, public. So this is public, this is pub, and this is media. So what happened is the media volume, which is persistent volume in Docker, Docker it will be mounted in the uh, var www pub public media, so into Magento media folder. And everything from this media folder uh, will be preserved between deployments. So this is important. We are not mounting the whole host system. We are just mounting media folders. Very good. And now we have everything we need to write the correct, uh, to, cor to write the correct uh, script, uh, to write the correct Docker Compose command to start our dedicated server. 
So I don't know why I erased it, but overall here you need to add docker dash compose uh, dot remote dot yaml. You run up minus D and that's pretty much it. So this is the run command on your dedicated server. If you go for your local development and you want uh, to do some changes on the front end, you require the front end container. So how you include it here, you mount, I will shorten the Docker Compose. I will write the DC instead, but you need to write the full Docker Compose here. Dot local, dot yaml. This is the first file to include because you need to mount the whole host. Minus F, DC, uh, SSL, dot yaml. This is required because you want to mount, uh, you want to have your self-signed certificate to test the service worker. Remember, service worker as and the PWA itself only works in the secure connection, so on HTTPS. And finally, minus F DC uh, dot frontend, frontend uh, dot YAML. This is the requirement if you go for the frontend development and uh, you want your files to be watched and hot reloaded. And of course, this file is also here. So the minus f docker compose.yaml, minus f docker compose.local yaml, minus f docker compose.ssl yaml, minus f docker compose.frontend yaml. And for uh, the production like startup on your local machine, if you don't want the front end, but you want to test how your website will work and perform on the remote server, you need to run this command docker compose minus f docker compose yaml minus f local yaml and this is cell and you don't include the front end so this is important this is what you need to remember and with that we are finishing the overview of the compose files well very cool we have reviewed what we had in our uh, we reviewed those files and we are hopefully now understanding what those files do i will erase all of them and while I'm doing this, I'll note about one file we haven't covered here. It's about the, it's related to the docker compose.core.yaml. And this file is created to serve the core team needs. So it's meant for contribution. We'll make uh, another video on contribution specifically. And uh, then I'll, there I will tell you about this file because it requires additional preparation to start using it. Very good. Now, uh, let's switch back to my computer and see what we have here additionally. Well, there is the .env and .application. Those files are very important for the application itself because those contain the credentials for your services. So if you want, uh, if you want to deploy to, for example, uh, your development instance, there you, I believe, might want to have the different uh, password for your MySQL root if you want to be a little bit more uh, if you want to be a little bit more secure or if you decide to go with this setup in production you might want to have a different passwords everywhere so how to achieve this well you need to change the dot application file inside you might find following uh, configurations it's the mysql configuration here as you might see you have a magento settings the admin password and the admin user as well as the url for the admin you also have the magento mode note it's magento developer by default and uh, you might change it to production but from my reports at least uh, at today's date it's in march uh, we have some issues running in production mode of magento so Potentially, you might want to keep the developer for now. Uh, also, there is a Magento base URL and Magento secure URL, which you want to change if you uh, are going for a different domain, not scandpw local, but whatever else. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, and also, if you have the remote server, of course, you type your domain here. Important stuff. And then this is this covers the application config. And for env, it's a little bit more uh, complicated because this is the uh, service configuration and it, the setup configuration itself. And inside you can find the mountings to different ports. So uh, instead of uh, instead of us using the hard coded ports, we prefer using uh, the 
conf uh, environment file to de declare ports we're using because this allows you to quickly uh, change them if you have some ports allocated by some services. So if you have issues with ports and you cannot simply stop the service running on this port, you can go into .n file and try changing the uh, ports here. Uh, additionally, there are uh, files like base path and theme path and those are uh, the configurations required to uh, to configure basically the uh, startup scripts. So, for example, if we have if we change the base path, if you want to deploy to var www slash I don't know Alfred's Gankins or uh, my friend is great, uh, whatever. So you need to change this base path. And if you go for a different theme name instead of Scandiweb PWA, you prefer. Uh, your vendor name PWA, you need to change this argument here along as alongside with the build and deploy script. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. We can also see two important things here, the project tag and the project image. Well, the tag is what you build your project with and the project image is what you uh, pull your project with. So if you change this, to xdebug like this, you will pull the latest xdebug image. And you can find uh, how to use and configure the xdebug, for example, by following link here. But overall, those are uh, this is for changing, for example, if you have the project image, uh, you're building different project images for different environments, you might have dev image, staging image, and production image, and latest in your dev. Yeah, so you might change it this way. And the xdebug is always xdebug, uh, so you might also want to build your images uh, to use the xdebug inside of them. So the composer version and the, and the composer home, then the Ruby's configurations, Node.js configurations, as you might have seen, we are using Node.js version 10. We're not migrating to Node 12 yet. Uh, we might migrate to next. Um, Max Maya version, so uh, that's a thing. And also we have here the GraphQL endpoint, the media endpoint, and uh, the static asset path, and other small configurations, which are currently, might even currently not be used. I think it's some legacy and could be removed. But overall, that's an overview of the .n file, and you can use it to configure your application. Well, very good to configure your services. Sorry, not the application for the application. We have the dot application config. Very good. We covered the uh, dot env, dot application and the Docker compose files. And this is the basics you need to know to start uh, working with a uh, uh, Scandi PWA setup. And next thing you will discover is that you need the aliases uh, you need to enter and execute into the container because uh, any command you want to run uh, to magento to run like cache flash setup upgrade whatever and composer install you need to execute on inside of the container so you need to get inside of the container and not do it on your local host on your host you are not doing anything if you're going into the docker setup so uh, you need to get inside of the container. Well, how we're doing this? In our alias list, which you can find in the docs, we had uh, this amazing command called uh, in up. So let's see what it contains in, inside of it. So the in up command contained the uh, Docker compose files. We have already spoken about them here. And then it has this execute minus u user and then the name of the application. Well, uh, let's talk about this a little bit. Well, exec is the command which you type uh, right near the uh, Docker Compose to start it, like to, to get inside of some container. Let's uh, see the board. So if I write the uh, docker-compose and I want to get inside of the application container, what I do, I write exec here I'm writing exec, then I have the place for arguments, 
and then I write the application container itself. So this is the app container. So Docker Compose execute and here will go some flags and here is the application. If you run it like this, it will work. Well, why? Because the application container is, if we remember, declared in the docker compose.yaml file, which is included by default if you run this command. So docker compose exec uh, up will get you inside of the application into the var www public. So you will get into var www public, which is the root of the container. From here, this is the magenta root as well, m2 root. So from here, you will be able to run uh, magento setup upgrade, like bin magento uh, setup upgrade. But uh, in reality, uh, because how our containers are set up, we have the alias or we have, uh, we have uh, included our magento binary in the path. So if you run simply magento, magento setup upgrade, it will also work from any folder. So uh, if you get, but uh, the biggest issue here will be that you will get the permission issue. If you run this uh, using this command, you will get the permission issue. So this command, magenta setup upgrade, will result in uh, broken, broken permissions. Why will result in the broken permissions? Well, here's when we speak a little bit more technical. We already spoke in technical, but now if we continue, uh, so by default, everything in Magento, everything in PHP, uh, in, if it's run in the container, is run from the root user. So we have this root user, hopefully it's seen. Yes, so we have root user, which is the PHP default user. But when it spawns, the uh, children of it, when it spawns the child processes, it spawns them, so th those are the childs, those are multiple childs, yeah? But those are run, let's name it child one, child two, child three, uh, and those are run from www slash dash data uh, user. And www data, uh, is a user of Magento child processes. And when you enter the container like this, your user here, if you write, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? This will give you the answer. Uh, you are the root. So if you are the root user, it means that command executed from your name will also create files which will uh, be uh, will be marked as uh, yours. So the child processes of Magento won't be able to uh, access those files. What is the solution? Well, the solution number one is here to include minus u user. And because we already created this user and added him the correct permissions inside of the container, you will be able to enter into the uh, Magento container using this user. And now when you write who am I in this setup, you will get the answer user. And if you will be user, then you will be in the same group as www data. So the files will be able to share, will share files, will share files. Hopefully you see it. And if it will share files, then there will be no broken permission problem. So to get uh, to 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 avoid the permission problem, always include minus u user when entering the application container, or use the in app, or use the in app alias, which we have, and then you can write bash, for example. So how to use it? You write in app bash and you get inside of the container. Uh, but here as well, this command won't work uh, a little bit misspelled it here. You need to add the uh, executable you need to run. So for example, bash, and now it will work. So docker compose exec app bash, ideally docker compose exec minus u user app bash, and it will work. So this is another thing to remember. It's very important. And um, yeah, this is a thing. Cool. 
And this is about how to execute and how to get inside of the containers. Amazing uh, information, very interesting. Well, how you see the locks. And um, in case of seeing the um, entering the container, you only need the Docker Compose file. You don't need to include any additional files because uh, the Docker Compose.yaml is included by default and the application is declared, application service is declared there. So the service discovery will find the service and will execute inside. But uh, if you want, uh, for, for seeing the logs of application container, let's erase this part and uh, write and uh, add new info here. So if you erase, uh, if, you, if, you, if you want to see the logs of application container, not Magento logs specifically, but the logs of application container itself, you have to write the same docker compose command, but now instead of exact, you write logs. So you're writing logs and then you're specifying the container name. So here is the app. And here's another place for your arguments. Let's talk about arguments a little bit uh, later. So Docker Compose logs, my uh, application will give you the latest logs of the application, but that won't follow them. So it will show you the latest on the time you wrote this command and it will stop. And then it won't continue. How to make it continue forever? How to make it follow the latest logs? Well, you need to include argument called minus F. So Docker compose logs minus F app. And this will allow you to follow the latest logs. So when they appear, they will be uh, all, uh, immediately shown. If, you do, if your application has the thousands or hundreds lines of the logs already, you might want to skip them and see only latest 100. Well, how to do it? You need to add additional uh, argument dash dash tail uh, tail and equals and amount of lines so dash dash tail as additional argument will allow you to see only latest x amount of uh, lines where x is the number of lines so dash dash tail is what you do and you add the equal sign and then you write x x x how many you want uh, lines of logs and it will follow them so when you saw the latest then it will follow with uh, one with all the logs if you combine it with minus f and this is about seeing the logs of application container again notice there are no minus f files here included nothing uh, it works right away for the same reason as here because the service is included in, is described in the docker compose.yaml file. So this is for seeing the logs of application container. This is amazing. So what about seeing the logs of frontend container? Well, for it, the command stays the same. You also do docker docker dash compose. You also need the logs. You also might want your minus F or whatever and then you add your front-end container, front-end. The difference here is now, if you run this as it is without any additional files, it will result in error. Why will it result in the error? Well, because the Docker Compose won't be able to locate the front-end service. It is not declared in the Docker Compose.yaml file. So what you need to do here is you need to include the whole stack or at least uh, the files which are, which are uh, relevant to the frontend. So docker-compose minus f docker, I will shorten it to dc once again, but you need to write docker-compose.yaml minus f docker, once again, docker-compose uh, dot frontend dot yaml and then you'll write logs minus f and the name of the container in case our this is the frontend so notice when you're seeing the logs of frontend you are required to write the uh, files so minus f docker compose yaml docker uh, compose frontend yaml and then logs minus f frontend and that's a big thing. This is what you need to remember. Well, guys, those are 
this is the command for getting inside of the application. This is for watching the application logs. This is for watching the front-end logs. And remember, here you need to include your minus F, so the files. And here F stands for files, and here F stands for follow, or to uh, follow the output. So I will erase this part because this uh, showcased and this uh, really declared. What else do we commonly do? Well, not much. And those commands are pretty much everything you need to have out of the box to start working. But if you want to find more uh, interesting commands, you can go to docscan to PWA and open the SSL useful, SSL, uh, useful click commands. Let me find them for you. Yeah, well, I switched to my screen. Here you can find the Docker Compose usage and the different commands to work with it. The application debugging, uh, how to run the application without the Magento itself, so using the different entry point. How to log, how to access the shell, how to rebuild and attach to the logs how to rebuild containers itself and uh, how to use the aliases. So remember, we have different aliases. You can see them on Docker on Linux here. And this is the list of aliases we recommend you to use. And just quickly, let's go through them. So DC is to start without the frontend container. DCF is to start with frontend container. InApp is to get inside of the application container using the U user. So app logs is for uh, seeing the logs of application container, as you might have seen, it's only latest 100. And the same goes for frontend, latest 100 lines of code. And that's pretty much it. So I hope this covers the uh, Docker Compose part. So we've seen how the files interact with each other, how what is in the an environment, uh, what is the in, what is in environment files, what's in application files, uh, and we have seen the useful CLI commands. So that covers our uh, Docker Docker Compose. Additionally, as uh, the helpers, you might really want to flush the varnish cache. In this case, you can write following command, dc, then you write execute, then what container, varnish, then what, bin what binary, varnish admin, and here you write what type of what you want to flush, request URL. Oh, sorry, what you are going to do, you're going to ban request URL by what pattern, you will ban every URL. And this is the command you can type in. You should remember it, or you can create an alias for you. And this is command to ban varnish. We might include it in our uh, default alias list. So uh, keep an eye on it. And additional command you might also find useful is just the restart command. So for it to work, you it's common. You can see the 502 uh, bad gateway or you can see the varnish meditation error in this cases you need to restart the containers so if you see varnish meditation error well you need to restart varnish and to do it you need to write dc restart varnish and this will restart your varnish container and if you want to restart the uh, front end this also happens you need to write dcf instead of dc and that's a big uh that's because otherwise the service won't be found so dcf restart front end i'm oh, sorry front end and now it should restart you the front end uh thank you for watching guys and i hope you have a great day